Okay, so chapter 5 deals with uh, metabolism, and sometimes metabolism can be quite difficult to understand because of the fact that it's very difficult to conceptualize. So uh, what I like to uh, get my students to do is, uh, or I guess one way to understand this better, is to, um, to draw your own diagrams and, and look at the big picture of metabolism. And once you see the big picture, often the smaller details start to fill themselves in. So what we're looking at here, uh, I hope everyone recognizes as being aerobic respiration, starting with the uh, glycolysis. Oops, glycolysis. And then this one here feeds through the prep, prep stage. And then this one is what? Prep cycle. And then over to our last stage, electron transport chain, right? Good. So now when we're looking at this, however, <clears throat> all you start to see, all you really look at is little details. And sometimes it's very difficult to understand what is going on, what's, where's the energy coming from, where are the electrons going, where does it end up, etc., etc. So it's very useful to be able to take this and turn it into something that looks like this. Now this is a picture from your textbook. It takes uh, the big or the small details of the steps, removes them, and all it really does is show you the big picture. Now it's uh, helpful to even recreate this uh, diagram showing both uh, respiration and fermentation. But uh, I always prefer if you draw your own diagram. And drawing your own diagram really helps you put it into your own words. Okay, so uh, I'll show you uh, how I do it. And then I think it's a good idea if you try it on your own. Okay, so let's start with the uh, glycolysis. And glycolysis is very simply glucose. And the end product of glycolysis is pyruvic acid or pyruvate. And that's the last product. Um, along the way, we make some very important products. One of these is ATP, okay, from ADP. And I always like to throw this in there. It's, this is why substrate level phosphorylation, right? Direct transfer of phosphate from, uh, from some sort of substrate onto ADP to make ATP. And another very important product here is a uh, NADH. And NADH, if you'll recall, is an electron carrier. And the analogy that I like to use is that NAD plus and NADH are taxi cabs. Well, essentially what they do is they, they shuttle electrons, okay? So NAD plus will be your vacant uh, taxi cab. It's got no electrons. It's looking for a fare. NAD plus will go to glucose, take some electrons, and then NADH is now our occupied taxi cab. All right, so now it's carrying its electrons, carrying its fare. Uh, what do taxi cabs do when they pick up, pick up a fare? They take it somewhere. And NADH ultimately is going to take our electrons somewhere. And we'll kind of get to that in a second. So that's glycolysis in a nutshell. It really tells you everything you need to know about glycolysis. It starts with glucose, ends with pyruvic acid. Along the way, we make some ATP via substrate level phosphorylation and some NADH. If you want to get uh, a little bit more detail, you can throw in numbers. We net 2 NADH, 2 ATP. But when you first do this, that's not really all that important. Okay, So that's what we've done. Um, stripping it down into the basics, uh, glucose is 6 carbon. Pyruvic acid is 3 carbon. And we make 2 of these. So essentially what we've done now is split glucose from one six carbon molecule into two three carbon molecules. Um, <clears throat> and we've made NADH, which are electron carriers. So essentially, uh, to rephrase that, what we've done is we've taken electrons from glucose and placed it onto NADH. Now these electrons are what we call high energy electrons. Um, stored in the covalent bonds of glucose. They carry a lot of energy and we're going to use that energy. So ultimately our source of energy is glucose and our source of electrons is glucose because everything originates from glucose. Pyruvic acid then goes through its one prep step. So we lose a carbon dioxide. Make another NADH. Becomes uh, acetyl-CoA and feeds into the Krebs cycle, right? Okay, so I'm going to run out of space. So this diagram is going to get very messy, but I hope you, you know, uh, get the picture. Um, 
And again, try to recru reproduce this on your own. Now, in the Krebs cycle, uh, some of the major products are NADH. Again, stripping of electrons. We make some FADH2, which is just like NADH. A um, little bit of ATP. I'll let you fill in how ATP is made, what process of phosphorylation uh, creates this ATP, and some more carbon dioxide. And at this point, we've, uh, oh, I don't know if you can see that. I'll rewrite it there. At this point, we've lost uh, all the carbon dioxide. We're going to lose six carbon dioxides in total um, for each glucose molecule. Glucose has six carbons. So essentially now what we've created are um, six carbon dioxide mo molecules from our six carbons in glucose. Or we, we're going to respire it out as waste. So after the Krebs cycle, we've gotten rid of all our carbons. There's no more carbons. All our carbons have been completely oxidized. Or all the electrons from glucose have been completely removed. Okay, and again, this whole idea of metabolism is stripping electrons, moving electrons around, and using the energy that's in the electrons from the covalent bonds and creating ATP for us. Note, we really haven't created much ATP at this point, just a little bit. Uh, oops, some up here and some down there. Okay, all right, so I pause it. I'll be I'm back. Um, <clears throat> so, so far, really, again, all we've really done is taken electrons from glucose and put it onto NADH. Now, this leads us to our last step, which is the electron transport chain. An electron transport chain, series of carriers in the membrane, and our full taxi cabs are moving to the electron transport chain. and dropping off electrons at the electron transport chain, just like a taxi cab. A taxi cab will pick you up somewhere, drop it off at, let's say, the airport. Um, electrons get dropped off. NADH becomes NAD+, plus, which is now, again, an empty taxi cab. And where do you think NAD+, plus goes? NAD+, plus goes back. to the Krebs cycle, to glycolysis, to the prep step, pick up some more electrons from the next incoming glucose molecule. And again, all we've really done is taken electrons from glucose and moved it over to the electron transport chain. Now the electron transport chain uh, transports electrons, so it's going to take electrons, move it from one carrier to the next carrier. And these are special enzymes, and every time electrons get moved, what happens? Protons get pumped up. Right? It takes the energy in these electrons, in these high energy electrons, and does active transport. The transport of molecules from an area of low concentration to high concentration um, and requires energy. And again, the energy comes from the electrons. We're pumping out these protons, creating an area of high proton concentration at the top uh, or outside, low on the inside. These electrons have to go somewhere. We can't just let them back up because if the electron stops here, then this electron carrier won't be able to pass it on. Then this electron carrier won't be able to pass it on. NADH won't be able to drop it off. Everything backs up. So our final electron acceptor in aerobic respiration is oxygen, and it becomes water. And so that's another waste product, water, carbon dioxide. Um, again, we really haven't made any ATP yet, um, and that comes in our last step by the ATP synthase, and I'm running out of time, so I'm going to do this fast. Now, ATP synthase is, a, is an enzyme that allows facilitated diffusion of hydrogen ions. Protons come in. Every time protons come in, we make ATP. And then most of our ATP comes from this last step. It's very similar to a dam um, uh, creating energy by uh, rushing water. Water rushes through a dam drives a turbine, creates ATP. Check out one of the animations. It shows you kind of how it works, shows you everything in motion. But again, this is big picture aerobic respiration. Um, you can see where the electrons come from, uh, what the energy is used, where the ATP comes from, and how it's made. Okay, so try that for yourself uh, for a respiration. Check out part two for uh, a bit more uh, details.